Jesus promises to give us the Holy Spirit. Along with the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit dwells in the hearts of all who are in the state of grace. Indeed, it's right to say that when the Holy Spirit comes to us, he bestows sanctifying grace on the soul, which includes the three theological virtues of faith, hope, and love. At the same time, the Holy Spirit also brings further and higher gifts to us, which enable us to act in a higher mode than the theological virtues. Following the text of chapter 11 of the prophet Isaiah, the Christian tradition identifies seven of these, which it calls the gifts of the Holy Spirit. These seven gifts dispose us to be inspired and moved by the Holy Spirit himself. What are these gifts of the Holy Spirit, and how are they different from the theological virtues? A virtue is a stable disposition of soul. That means that if you possess a virtue, you can use it at will. A virtuoso singer has the ready capacity to sing beautifully whenever she decides to do so, and it works something like the same way with the virtues. If you have a virtue you've acquired by repeated action, like, for example, being truthful, which is a part of the virtue of justice, you can engage in an act of that virtue, you can actually be truthful by speaking the truth at will, whenever you judge it to be the right place and time for it. This is also true for the theological virtues of faith, hope, and love. God supernaturally infuses those virtues into the soul of every person in the state of sanctifying grace, but it remains in a certain sense up to each person actually to use those virtues under the promptings of God's grace. If you have the virtue of charity, then you have a stable disposition by which you yourself can act. For example, you really can make an act of love for God in a moment of prayer or by doing some kindness for your neighbor. In other words, you freely decide when to use or deploy your virtues, when to make an act of virtue. You do this according to the best lights you have as you make a judgment about what is the right thing to do here and now. In a certain sense, then, the free capacity to use a virtue is placed in our hands. But the Christian tradition testifies that there is also the real possibility that God might move you directly in a higher way than this, according to a higher reason than your mind can grasp, even when it's enlightened by the virtue of faith. And here, we're in the realm of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Of course, every grace or gratuitous favor that God bestows on us can be called a gift. But as we're using it now, the generic term gift has come to have a special meaning. It refers to a perfection that God bestows on the soul in a state of sanctifying grace that makes the soul docile to the inspirations and promptings of the Holy Spirit. St. Thomas Aquinas has a refined and insightful account of these gifts which he sometimes also calls spirits or inspirations. He says that they are not acts themselves, but rather the gifts of the Holy Spirit are principles of action. They're not the same as the passing helps of grace, what sometimes are called actual graces or impulses of a divine motion that set our faculties to functioning. Rather, the gifts are stable dispositions given to the soul which make it ready to be inspired by God who moves it from above. You might think of them like seven sails of a ship. The sails themselves are not the same as the wind that moves the ship. Raising the sails does not guarantee that the wind will blow, but it does make the ship ready to move by the wind's power when it does blow. God bestows the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit on every soul that receives sanctifying grace so that every Christian is thus made ready to act according to the impulse of the Holy Spirit whenever that divine wind arrives. This helps us understand how the gifts of the Holy Spirit are distinct from the theological virtues. The virtues dispose you to act well as your mind judges best, but the gifts are higher perfections that dispose the soul to be moved divinely by God himself according to God's higher plan and his higher wisdom. Aquinas thinks that everyone who has sanctifying grace receives these seven gifts or dispositions to be moved by God. In fact, he thinks the gifts are necessary for our salvation 
because even when our minds are elevated by the theological virtues, they will still only be able to judge about what's right to do insofar as the power of reason guides us. But the path that leads to heaven transcends the horizon of this world. If we're to follow that path, if we're to conform our lives to God's divine plan, we need to be ready for the Holy Spirit to move us, to lift us up, and to lead us there. According to St. Thomas, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit listed in Isaiah 11 perfect the virtues. The gift of wisdom perfects the virtue of charity. The gifts of knowledge and understanding perfect faith. Counsel perfects the virtue of prudence. The gift of fortitude perfects the virtue of courage or fortitude. The gift of piety perfects justice, and the gift of fear of the Lord perfects the virtues of hope and of temperance. How does the Holy Spirit move us through these gifts? St. Thomas offers a marvelous insight here. He says that through the gifts, we receive the divine promptings of the Holy Spirit in matters when the prompting of reason is not enough. Now, the Latin word that Aquinas uses there is instinctus, which instead of being translated prompting, could even be translated instinct. That is, the gifts ready us to follow well a divine instinct. What does this mean? Think of honeybees. They act by instinct, which is to say, bees seem to have a kind of natural impulse or desire to act in a certain way. When we look at this behavior of bees, our minds grasp that bees are engaging in highly systematic and purposeful activity. But the bees themselves don't think about that, nor do they deliberate about or choose what they're going to do. They don't have minds capable of understanding. But it remains true that through its natural instinct, each honeybee and the whole hive is directed towards an end according to a plan. At the highest level, it's true to say that God is the ultimate author of that plan and that each bee acts according to it through the natural impulse or instinct that the bee has by nature. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are a bit like this, but on a much higher and supernatural level. Much more than a honeybee, a person who is growing in the life of the Spirit does understand something of what he does and why but he will still not perfectly grasp God's plan for his salvation and for the salvation of the whole world. That plan is as infinite as divine providence itself. Through the gifts of the Holy Spirit, God gives that person a divine instinct that leads him to act according to God's plan, according to God's mind. The Christian who is moved by God through the gifts still acts freely using his powers and his virtues, but the impulse and the direction of his action comes from God who is above him. For readings, podcasts, and more videos like this, go to Aquinas101.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for one of our free video courses on Aquinas, and don't forget to like and share with your friends because it matters what you think.